mixing Facebook and email, right? And the reason why we want to mix Facebook and email, why is that? If we were to think about Facebook as a tool in a toolbox, in your marketing communications toolbox, it would be a tool that would definitely encompass word of mouth marketing, right? So word of mouth marketing has been around since anything was for sale. I mean, you know, since maybe the agricultural revolution, hey, that guy has really great tomatoes. You got to go check out his tomatoes. Okay, so word of mouth, it's the most powerful and effective way to do marketing, right? Getting your current people talking about you with their friends. And when I say getting your people talking about you with your friends, what do we think about? We think about Facebook. Okay, so that's really how you should think about Facebook is it's a tool to get your current people talking about you. Who are your current people? Your current people are or your supporters or your community, whatever you want to call them. They are on your email list. They are on your email list because they've attended an event. They've subscribed to your email list. They have made a donation. They have volunteered. In some way, you have an email and they are on your email list. Okay, those people are already sold. They are past the honeymoon phase. And your job, in a sense, is to get them to tell their friends about your cause, about your organization, get them involved in your events. And why is that? The reason why is because birds of a feather flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. And uh, the way that Facebook works and the way that online networks function is that people generally associate and become friends with people that have similar interests. Okay? That's kind of obvious. That's a no-brainer if you think about your own experience. Okay? So we're going to talk about some ways that you should think about integrating Facebook and email. Some will be strategic. Some will be very tactical. Okay? So we're just going to run down these. Uh, the first rule with anything about your email list, especially if you're trying to promote your list and have people join uh, your email list, right? The first rule is you have to have a single page where people can join your list. And when I say um, a single page, I mean a single unique URL that you can share on social media or on Facebook or within a custom tab, so forth. Okay. So what this does, it allows you to promote your list, share your list with anybody, anywhere with a short URL on Twitter, uh, with, you know, in, a, in the text in Instagram, on Pinterest, linking back to that page on Facebook. So the, the prerequisite here really is you have to have a single page for people to join your list, um, especially if you're trying to build your email list. Now, uh, l let's not make any mistakes here. We should really think about different segments that we're trying to build in our email list. So we might have a list of volunteers, a list of email subscribers, a list of people who've attended an event, right? So we might have a single page where people can go and and get volunteer alerts. You know, sign up to get alerts about volunteer opportunities, right? Sign up to get action alerts to be an advocate. Sign up to join our newsletter and kind of get insider information about the cause, new research, news, really great stories, um, partner promotions. There's a lot of uh, basically incentives that you can offer for people to join your email list, but they, um, you know, you really have to have a single page in those cases. Okay. Uh, the second one is make sure that the forms are mobile. And the reason why, and again, we're kind of on the topic of building your email list by promoting it specifically on Facebook. And, and I'm going to talk about promoting it in a couple of different ways. Uh, but more and more mobile users are using, I'm sorry, more and more Facebook users are using Facebook through a mobile device. I saw a statistic the other day that uh, six, uh, I think it was 650 million active users are accessing Facebook every day through a mobile device. Not every month. It used to be monthly active users on mobile. Now we're looking at daily. Now we're talking about 60, 600, I'm sorry, it was about 650 million active users using mobile on a daily basis. So what does that mean? That means that most of the people that are going to be, you know, viewing your web forms, they're going to be on a mobile device. So if they see an update in the news feed that says, you know, sign up for action alerts or check out Mary, she's one of our volunteers, here's her story, find out about how you can 
uh, become a volunteer by clicking here and getting signing up for alerts, right? If someone does that, they're going to do it. Most people are going to do it through a mobile device. They're going to see your form. You definitely want to make sure the form is mobile. Check with your email provider, Constant Contact, MailChimp, AWeber, Get Response. Most of these companies should have a mobile form, okay? Uh, so that's the first rule. First rule is create a landing page, single landing page. Make sure that that landing page or your email form at least is somewhat mobile so that people can have an easy time joining your list and they're not going to abandon the process halfway through. Okay. Now let's get to promoting your list on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> let's stick with the example of the volunteer opportunities. All right. And you could use this, you kind of apply this approach to uh, any email opportunity, right? your newsletter, action alerts, um, event signups, that type of thing. What you want to do is you want to post content that's related to the campaign, uh, particularly photos, because we all know that photos perform really well on Facebook. Uh, and another statistic that's really interesting, and this is a, a recent statistic, is that uh, the top two social media sites on mobile devices are Instagram, and Pinterest. Now, I didn't say Facebook. We're talking about the top most most popular social media sites that people use on a mobile device, and those are uh, Instagram and uh, I'm sorry, Pinterest and Instagram, and that's followed by uh, I think Twitter and Facebook. I'm not sure if it's Facebook and Twitter or Twitter and Facebook, but it's pretty close. And uh, what this really says is that people like images. Images are very effective because the top two social network sites are uh, pre uh, mostly, I mean, obviously images, right? So um, post pictures, but it's not really just pictures. Post useful content that relate to the campaign. Try different, try different uh, content types. Certainly try uh, text updates for mobile. Certainly try photos, try links, right? Mix the content type up, but the focus and the emphasis should be on making the content useful and interesting and, engage, and engaging and about the community, okay? Try to avoid being self-promoting, like, hey, join our email list. We're trying to join our email list. Or, don't, you know, don't make it about you. Really, you know, as I've discussed before, people use social media and they, they use the internet and they join your email list really for, for their own reasons. So you kind of have to speak to those reasons. Okay. Uh, so here's a great example here from uh, Greenpeace. The next one is once you post a couple of different updates on your Facebook page that link back to the email opportunity, what you want to do is you want to select the top performing posts. So go to Facebook insights, under the, let me just minimize this guy so I can really see what's going on here. I'm going to get to questions in just a little bit. So I'm just going to, there we go. I just want to get the GoToWebinar thing out of the way. It was blocking my view. So uh, in the on the right-hand side, you'll see the option to look at engagement rate. So you definitely want to select engagement rate, rank it from high to low, and then the higher the percent is, that's an indication that that content is really great. So uh, you could look at it, engagement rate as almost a content score, you know, the quality score, quality content, the rate of engagement that the update receives is often speaking to the quality. So um, what you want to do is you want to boost these posts. Okay. So don't boost every single update that you post that's related to your email list or, or you know, join our volunteer uh, alerts. You only want to boost and spend money on promoting the stuff that's getting a lot of engagement. Right, because the engagement rate generally will stay the same. If it if it sees more people, it will generally stay the same. It won't be as high, but it will certainly stay you know close to that percent. Right, because the the idea here is really the content is good quality. If you have a high engagement rate, basically what that says is that that update is a good piece of content. It's engaging. People comment, like, and share it. If you have more people see that, particularly if you target your boosted posts wisely, um, then you're just going to get more of the same, more of the same level and percent of likes, comments, and shares. Okay, so boost wisely. That's the that's the takeaway here. And then 
you can also use tools like Action Sprout. And I've met, mentioned Action Sprout before, but Action Sprout is a pretty cool tool that allows you to acquire emails in the news feed, not necessarily in a custom tab, but in the news feed. And you can publish as many updates as you want about your email list using Action Sprout. And then, of course, with the updates that are performing really well, you want to boost those or give them even more visibility, right? So you're getting pr basically promoting your list. So for those of you who don't know Action Sprout, there's a link here, just actionsprout.com. You can check it out. Basically what it is, it's a, it's a, a, um, a Facebook app that allows you to acquire emails in the newsfeed. And it does this by using uh, some actions that Facebook has reserved for developers, right? So our verbs that we all know and love are like, comment, and share. Those are the Facebook actions that are common, right? Uh, but they also have about 40 other actions that they've reserved for developers. Action Sprout has taken all of these verbs and, and, have, and have said, hey, let's let our customers use these verbs and decide how they want to use them. So now you can choose actions like support, stand with, donate to, and here's an example from the Sierra Club, right? One or two mouse clicks. People are not filling out their name and email, typing all the details in. They're simply clicking stop. And then they have to authorize Facebook. They have to authorize the app and then the email is acquired. Action Sprout also sends an autoresponder, right? So as soon as they say stop Sierra Pacific Industries from clear cutting, then they get an auto reply. Hey, thanks for standing with the Sierra Club. This is a really important campaign. Here's what else you can do. Okay. Uh, and here's an, just another screenshot of an Action Sprout item. This one is about focusing on demand. That's the action. Demand an end to the targeting, torturing, abduction, abuse of children in Syria. Okay. Um, now, the key here is that you really have to pick an action that's going to be meaningful to people. As we can see, this is an example where it's meaningful. So you try and avoid donate to. Use something that's a little bit more almost like a middle ground. We have like, comment, and share. Donate is asking a lot, right? So maybe support, stand with, demand. Um, you know, those, those type of approaches might be better because if in case you don't know it, people don't give money on Facebook, but they will give you their email address. And then through email, you can con you be a little bit more successful actually converting people into a donor. OK, and you could you could test all this out for yourself and see what works for your organization. Right now, let's change up the topic a little bit and talk about uh, asking email subscribers to promote your list with their Facebook friends. So at this point, I want you to Erase your Facebook page from your mind for a moment because we're not really talking about your Facebook page. What we're talking about is um, embedding a link into your uh, your email message that sent that you send out, and that link is actually going to drive uh, email subscribers to the the link is basically your email subscribe page. So if we go back here, right, this unique page that you created with that unique URL. You're going to take that URL and then what you're going to do is you're going to take that URL and follow these instructions right here. Uh, and I'm just going to read the instructions. You copy this link. You don't necessarily have to visit this link. You can just copy the link that I'm showing you in A. And then right after the equal sign, you know, it says question mark U equal. Right after the equal sign, you're going to copy, you're going to paste that URL to your subscribe page. Then you take the whole URL, you embed it into an email message. You want to make sure you test it. So what this does is that when someone, when your email uh, subscriber receives this message, it says, hey, share this list with your friends. If you like these volunteer alerts and you think that they're really useful, share this with your friends. Invite your friends to become a volunteer too. Click here to share these volunteer opportunities or to share this list with your friends. Okay, so people click on that link. And as we've seen in the uh, screenshot below, a window pops open and you can share the link with Facebook friends. So email subscribers, one mouse click, they click share link and it's shared with all their friends. So you're, you're, what, you're, what your email subscribers are sharing is really a link back to 
the volunteer sign up form or the volunteer alert page that we that we mentioned earlier. Okay. Uh, and then you also want to track performance. So if you're doing any of these approaches, you definitely want to compare how they're um, working with other approaches. Say, you know, you have an email opt-in form on your website, you have email opt-in forms on your Facebook page, and you can also use tracking code to see how, you know, how people are converting as well. Okay, so make sure you're always tracking the performance of all of these approaches. And that is it. So I'm going to open this up for Q&A.